Hey everyone, Courant here welcoming you to Wild Arms. I will introduce the game proper in just a moment, but I think the anime opening to this game is pretty cool, so I'm going to let that do the talking, and I will see you guys in just a moment. All right, welcome to Wild Arms. If you have not yet done so, I'd recommend you watch the intro video I made before diving into this with us. All right, if you're ready to go, let's go ahead and make our way into the world of Phil Gaia. Now, as you see, I have actually already played through the game because I was basically getting ready for this playthrough, and I've actually beaten it a couple of times, but we're not concerned with that. Let's go ahead and get ourselves started. Now, you notice there's Rudy and Jack and Cecilia sitting there, and you'll eventually need to play through all three. The sequel, or the remake rather, to this game, A Wild Arms Alter Code F, actually forces you to start as Rudy. And that is how I'd originally played through the game anyway, so we're going to go ahead and start with him. Life is gradually fading from the land. Slowly, but surely, the destruction of Felgaia continues. A devastated environment, filled with ferocious monsters, plague the people of Felgaia who desperately try to cling to their land. Those who dare to venture out are called dream chasers. There is a boy in the village of Surf. It's hard to believe that this boy has the potential to become a dream chaser. What does he seek? We're calling it a day, kid! Thanks a lot. The barrels are all sorted. All right, sounds good to me. I hired you at the recommendation of Mayor Pfeiffer. You turned out to be okay. By the way, what's your name? Now, I'm going to stick to the traditional names because that's how I introduced the game in the intro video. But don't worry, we're going to have some naming fun a little bit later on. Just you wait. Rudy, you're stronger than you look. The horses seem happy. Here's today's pay. 
Sorry kid, this is all the village can afford. Oh well, that'll work, I guess. You should see if the mayor has any more work for you. Thanks again. See ya. All right, and we are Rudy Rough Knight. Now you see, you hit triangle to go into the menu, and then you see all the menu options here, which you can hold triangle to basically see the description. Now the item there, of course, obviously, ta-da, nothing really big there. You can arrange it if you need to. The star button there is your force menu, which shows for Rudy his selection of arms. Now we just have the hand cannon right now, which is a single weapon. We'll, of course, get more and better ones as we go along. Then you have the equip menu, which not really anything big there, except the room category we will fill in as we go through the story. The, this is the auto battle one. I don't use that because I like to go ahead and manually control my characters. It just makes it more fun to me. Then you have the status menu here. Again, nothing big with that. You see the equipment there on your left hand side and the RPG stats over to the right. The strength and vitality, basically offense and defense. Sorcery affects your magic resistance, which for Rudy is gonna be his worst attribute. And then the response, in essence, is his speed. The luck stat that you see down there on the bottom right is randomized, and we're not gonna deal too much with it because there's not really much we can do about it right now. We can affect it a little bit later, but again, that'll come in time. All right, then you have the options menu, which I don't make much use out of. You see some of the descriptions there. You do, in fact, have a screensaver if you wanna turn that on in this game. You can also change the sound, or you've got motion video, or motion view rather, if I could read my own description. In essence, it affects the camera. I don't change that around because I like it to be a bit more dynamic. Then you can change the button settings if you want to, which I generally don't. All right, so we can pick chickens up, throw them around, be a little interactive. We can talk to the horses or talk behind the horses and they kick us in the butt. So, oh boy, okay. You can also pick up and throw crates around, which you'll want to do because they have items in them. So just toss crates around as you need to, to get them out of the way or get items out of them. There we go. And you can just roll around here. You can hold the X button down to dash, which I would encourage you to do because Wild Arms is going to cover a good bit of ground. And this is definitely a better way to do it than just sitting here and walking around, although he's not too slow. Ah, come on. Hey, there we go. <clears throat> Busy, busy, busy. I'm so busy today. Do you want to know why? Of course we do, because we're nosy little brats. Heh. <laughs> All right, well, he's not going to tell us. Boo. Okay, but he does infer that he's going somewhere anyway. You can also check these barrels to see if there's anything in them. Uh, a lot of the barrels aren't going to have much in them. You will later get a tool that actually can help you with that, but again, that comes later. Long ago in the cave to the south, holy berries. The last seed was used to kill a monster. Oh, okay. Nah, I'll go ahead and tell you the story as we move through the town. Huh, nobody believes in the story anymore. Eh. All right, anyway. Basically what happened was there were a bunch of heel ba er, holy berries, and everybody was proud of them, and the town loved having them and all that stuff. Well, this monster comes along, that keeps the adventurers from getting the heel bear, the holy berries, good lord, because the monster kept regenerating so they couldn't get rid of the thing. Okay, uh, Calamity Jane is a name you need to remember because we will see her later on in the adventure. Okay, anyway, so this monster keeps coming back time and time and time again. The town gets bounty hunters to try to deal with it, but they can never get rid of the thing because, well, it keeps coming back. Well, one day, this bounty hunter has a great idea to actually use a holy berry to basically plant a holy berry in the monster as it was regenerating. So that ultimately took care of the problem. You see also this guy mentions he is going to be going to a city or he wants to go to a city holding a festival. We will go to that city in short order. So ever since the monsters were vanquished or the big monster was vanquished by the holy berry there haven't been any more but there also haven't been any more big monsters either so i uh, basically that's the gist of the story there all right talk to doggy toss a chicken 
toss the crates, which I don't think have anything in them, and then go in here, and we have, if she'll stop walking, Tony's mama. All right. And apparently the hubby, or Tony's dad, is injured, so we've been taking care of the horses for them. Just wander over here. We can talk to Tony's dad real quick. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no problem. Not a big deal. It's uh, not really been very hard to help you out, especially since all we were apparently doing at that point was pushing barrels around. Again, Tony's father mentions the holy berries. The town seems to be pretty hung up on them, even though the holy berries are all gone. You have here the save bird, basically the memory bird as they call it. You can save your game or you can change characters if you need to. There's only really one time or one set of times that we'll actually need to do that at a memory bird. And that will come in relatively short order as we go through, as we introduce ourselves to the rest of the characters. Okay, uh, let's see, let me mosey down here. This is our shopkeeper, so we can just buy a couple of things. I'm just going to go ahead and buy a couple of healing items for each of these statuses, and I'll run through and show you what they do in just a moment. Okay, so you have the antidote, which naturally cures poison. Medicine cures disease, which if you get that, you can't be healed by anything, any items, or any magic. Silence, of course, keeps you from casting magic. And then paralysis, well, keeps you from doing much of anything. We already have a long knife equipped, so no need to buy that, of course. Okay, so, uh, just keep moving through, and I don't think there's much else for us to pick up, really. Uh, there might be... Yeah, okay, there's something here. And then I think we've got something up toward the top here, but I'm not certain. Let me check. Let's see. Let -da 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 -da, nothing in there. And, okay, yeah, there we go. The power apple. You'll be getting those apples, and I'll show you a little bit more about what they do in a bit when we get more of them, and I can sort of show them off a little bit better. If you're playing on your own and you want to do a little grinding in the world map or in the first area before you really get into the swing of the story, you can talk to the mayor's wife and she will basically let you rest for free. So I'm not going to do that because we haven't done anything, but you can do that if you want to. Here, of course, is the mayor himself, so let's talk to him for a moment. Rudy, how are you? Thanks to you, the stables are in great shape. Take these as a token of my appreciation. Long ago, I found these bombs while exploring ancient ruins. You may find them handy. All right, so we get our first tool, which is nice. These bombs will destroy most small objects. Walk next to the object you want to blow up and push the tools button, i.e. square. It will go off in a bit. These magical bombs will never run out. <laughs> Link, eat your heart out. In the good old days, magic berries could be found in the cave to the south. We would use the bombs to clear debris from the cave. Now that all of the berries are gone, we no longer need them. The world is fading, and our village is starting to feel the impact. Well, that's no good. Uh, but anyway, you push square, and you can plant bombs, and they'll just blow up on you. If you want to change... What tool you're using, you hit start, and it'll bring up the tools menu. Eventually, you'll have Jack and Cecilia to switch around with as well. And, well, crap. Excuse me, I must talk to the mayor immediately. All right. Mayor Pfeiffer, a child from our village has gone into the berry cave. What? What do we do? The berry cave is full of monsters. There's not much we can do. I must talk to the townsfolk about this situation. Please keep this quiet. We can't have people panicking. Eh, well, that's no good. Well, we've only met one child in this village, and that was Tony. And, well, sure enough, he's gone. Okay, so the mayor's talking about people not panicking, and we need to try to figure out what we're going to do. One last thing before we head out of the village, pro tip, bomb the memory bird here. Because if you do that, you get all the chickens flocking towards you. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, not to do anything Zelda-esque, which is the chickens will start attacking you, but if you blow up 
one of them, they will drop a light shroom, which cures flash. In essence, it flash inhibits your ability to evade attacks, so that's a good thing to have as well. Alright, so we're setting off onto the world map. And I really like the music in this game. I'll talk a little bit more about that music later once we get all three members in our party and we can go gallivanting about the world. But this music is pretty nice, and a lot of it is inspired by very specific sources. So, we can make our way into the first dungeon of the game, the Berry Cave. Go and talk to this hatted gentleman for a moment. <laughs> wow, I look away for a second and this kid gets past me! Yeah, yeah, nobody from the village. Okay, well, we can just go on in, zap over here, and we can use our bombs to grab more stuff. Hooray! No trespassing. Bats bring danger, which I will get to that in a minute when we run across it. So, just mosey on through here and try not to run into walls. And we come to our first pseudo-puzzle of the game, which basically hit the lever, move the statue, and move on. So, just keep on going through here. We come to the boxes. We can blow up or we can just toss them around, but unfortunately they don't really seem to have much of anything in them. And we get our first random battle of wild arms, facing a balloon. A rather ugly balloon, I might add. Okay, now this opening menu here, you see you can fight and go ahead and attack the enemy. You can change your equipment if you need to. You can initiate auto battle if you want to. Again, I don't bother. You can change the order of your units. Once you get all three members in your party, you can switch them around in terms of one, two, three. I don't really see the need to do that. Or, of course, you can just run away from battle, which I also don't see the need to do either. So, go ahead and go into the attack menu. If you just hit the fist, you'll just go ahead and straight out attack them. Use the star button. You can use your arm if you're Rudy or whatever skill you're using. You can use items with naturally the item bag. You can defend with the shield. Or, you can go down to the bottom and use your force skill, which for Rudy, enhances his arm's accuracy to 100%. I'm not going to use that yet because, well, I can't, for one thing. You build up force as you fight in battle. I'm also going to save this for the boss because it'll come more in handy for him than it will for really any of these regular monsters. So let's go ahead and attack the balloon and see if we can take him out. And we get a critical hit in the first battle, and we take him out. Nice. Good job, Rudy. So... There's your first battle in a very short nutshell. So just move on through here, and we're gonna pick up more money, hooray. Whistle on owl down this way. You will be running into walls and stuff a lot, so no problems with that. And we have another new enemy, the goblin. Now, pretty much the same order as the first one, just go ahead and attack him and watch the goblin try to dance around a little bit. Now the goblins are a little bit faster and a good bit stronger than the balloon. So if you're going through early, you'll want to be careful in regards to what you're doing so that you don't get too far down on your health. Now we do have several heal berries right now, so it should be okay. But just, you know, just be careful. Don't try to rush too much or don't try to be too much of a hero in the early going because Rudy's level one and we need to basically act accordingly. Okay, okay, that was just another balloon, so no real big deal there. All right, next puzzle, you see the lever and you see the box. Now, unfortunately, if you hit the lever first, this statue's not gonna go anywhere, so blow up the box and then go down and hit the lever down here and you should be in good shape to move on. I think this will take us to a new area, I believe. Yes, okay, new area, all right. Just keep on going here. And you read this sign be quiet. Footsteps may wake the bats. These are the bats that they were referring to at the beginning of the dungeon. And yeah, what you want to do here is you don't want to run. You want to walk. Because if you get caught running, you will be basically attacked by a bat and your encounter rate will go up. So we just take a stroll here. And we end up running into two more goblins. So it wasn't too much to take care of them. Although I do need to go ahead and heal myself. Okay. Ooh, don't run. <laughs> Sorry, I almost forgot myself there. 
If you do end up running or you forget to walk, it doesn't matter too much. All right, let's see. Isn't that nice. Okay, well, it turns out we have our third enemy here, the Tatzelbaum. Now, I'm going to go ahead and take the balloon out first because I want to get rid of it before it decides to try to attack me any. This Tatzelbaum is a bit slower, but it's also a bit more powerful than the balloons. Well, pretty much anything's more powerful than the balloons, so what am I saying? But if you end up getting into a battle with one of these, these things, be careful because it can get a little bit hairy if you're not diligent on your HP or trying to take care of it quickly. I don't think we're going to see Tatzelbaum's Flame Tongue here, but he does have a Flame Attack which hurts about twice as much as his normal Snapping Jaw Attack here. So now we're not going to see Flame Tongue because he is dead! Alright, so we've seen all the enemies in the Berry Cave. Whoops, didn't mean to plant a bomb there. And so I'll be skipping the enemies from here on out. If you did happen to run in that walkway and you got a bat around you, you can use the holy symbol to basically get rid of it if you need to. That's not really a problem you'll see too much in this game, though. Let's see. I think we're close to the exit. Okay, that was a goblin and a balloon there, and as it turns out, Rudy ended up leveling up. So, yay! And Rudy got a lot more HP, which he really needed at that point in time. Now, I think there's an item in here. If I can bomb the right box, of course. Yeah, there we go. Okay. And then we've also got some items in the not very well hidden fake wall over there. Power Apple, the Hardy Apple, and the Agile Apple. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and show you what these apples do, because the only one we're missing is the Mystic Apple. Now, the Hardy Apple increases your vitality, your defense, basically. The Power Apple increases your strength, and the Agile Apple increases your response, or your speed. The Mystic Apple increases your magic, which isn't going to matter to Rudy because, well, he's definitely not a magical sort. All right, move down here. We've got one more, well, I was going to say one more item, but it ended up being one more goblin. But yeah, one more item here. And then we're going to come down here to another puzzle, which now we have two statues. All you really need to do for this is just hit the left lever first to move that one out of the way, and then the right lever to move the other one. And that's pretty much the end of that. All right, so let's make our way down here. We find a bullet clip, which... If you've been using your arm as Rudy, you can use the bullet clip to fill it back up. I haven't been using it yet, so it's not going to be a problem for this battle. But still, just in case you need it, there you go. This is your save point, and I'm not going to use that yet because I want to do one or two things before we finish off here. Just mosey on up through here, and you'll end up finding Mr. Tony. I've come to look for berries for my father. The berries are on the other side of this blocked passage, which, well, a good thing we have a bomb then, so that we can undo said passage. Now, don't go all the way into this room yet, because if you go all the way up to the top, it's going to cue the events that'll end up eventually in a boss battle. But just go on through here and grab the bandana, which is Rudy's first, basically, headgear, helmet, whatever you want to call it. It'll up his defense a little bit, which is not going to be a huge deal, but it does at least get you ready for the boss fight that's coming up. Now, I'm going to go ahead and head over here and save, because we're... No, I'm not planting a bomb in the save point. Go ahead and heal up, because you don't have shelters or tents or anything that you can use to heal at a save point. So, go ahead and heal. And next time on Wild Arms, we will grab ourselves some holy berries and fight ourselves a boss fight and see what we can do with that. So thank you guys for joining me, and I will see y'all later.